Greetings viewers, welcome back to my channel here in the basement and following up on a project that I did about a half a year ago back in October. I worked with K-Line Technologies. This is the CP-81 10 band EQ from them and I had worked with some of their engineers to fix a problem that came on this pedal on the old version of the circuit board inside where you were getting a lot of white noise and hiss coming from the up converter circuitry inside. The old version is 2.1 and 1.0 of the boards and then the 3.0 version that I worked with them has all the flaws of the circuit board design corrected. However, there is still a bunch of the 2.1 versions available as new old stock that are being sold. Unfortunately, you can't tell if you are going to get the 2.1 or the 3.0 version unless you take the pedal apart. So one of the many requests that I've gotten from the viewers that have been following me on this project was, can you do a video showing how to modify the older versions of this board in order to get rid of the noise and hiss? And while I can do that, I'm very hesitant to go about showing you only because it requires the surface mount device tools to rework that board inside and most people don't have those tools and it would be impractical and not really cost effective to modify this board but if you're interested i do have the schematics right here i'm going to show you what you could do in order to get rid of that noise hiss if you have it but again it's not going to be very practical i'm going to be making this video for informational purposes only i will not be performing any of these modifications simply because I am simply going to use a drop resistor to that is adjustable to get the eight and a half volts in order to run this at the proper voltage so that it does not have the white noise and hiss uh, and that will certainly work for my for my needs but I know some people would be interested in doing this if they have the surface rework tools so here we go over here is the step up circuitry and you can see that J1 is the nine volt barrel adapter that's coming in. And then the chip U5, it's a six pin, very, very small, is what is actually doing the up converter circuitry. So it's taking in nine volts and outputting 18 volts. And the parts that are missing on this 2.0, I'm sorry, 2.1 board are as follows. You are missing L2, which is a 22 micro Henry. And then you are missing L3, which is another 22 micro Henry, C37, which is a bipolar or nonpolar, I should say, ceramic capacitor rated at 226 microfarads. And C1 will depend because I've found 100 microfarads and 16 volts in that position. But on this particular board, I have a, you can't see it too well, but it is a 100 microfarad and 25 volt rated capacitor. What is important is that you will need 25 volts rated. If you have a 16 volt, then you will need to replace it because obviously you're going to be running 18 volts on the chips. Now that we know what's missing, you could see the circuitry here on the board and 4R7, that's the large L1 inductor on the input side, but you are missing the C37, the L2, and the L3. And what they've been replaced by is either an insufficient C1, in this case I don't have that problem, it's rated up to 25 volts, and 100 microfarads is actually just fine. You could put a 220 microfarads in there, it's not really gonna make that big of a difference. They've added an R1 and R58. Those are not on the schematic. And all it basically is, so that zero is a zero ohm resistor, and that's connected to the negative side of C1. And then R1 is a 10 ohm drop resistor because you are getting 18 volts from the up converter circuitry, but it is dropping it down to 16 volts because at the time they did not want to surpass the voltage rating of the capacitor that was in there. And that is why they did the 10 ohm resistor. It's a really cheesy way to do it, but this is the direct reason why this pedal has all kinds of noise on it. Now to modify this version 2.1 board to get rid of that noise, if you have the surface mount tools, this is how you do it. 
first you want to remove R1 altogether. There's no need for that drop resistor. And then check C1. 100 microfarads is more than adequate. The schematics say 220 microfarads, but you really don't need any more than 100 because the power supply is going to handle the regulation most of the time. And it needs to be rated at least 25 volts. In this particular case, uh, you can't see it too well, but it is rated up to 25 volts. I've drawn out where you need to make the modification to hopefully make this a little bit easier. Now, the missing components are L2, L3, and C37. You might have to replace C1 if it is not at least 25 volts rated. There's a good chance it might be 16 volt rated. You want to change it out for a 25 volt electrolytic capacitor. The banded side is on the left hand side next to the jack, so just make sure of your polarities. And what I mean by that is that you have the banded side to the left if you're looking at the board this way. The next thing you want to do is remove the 10 ohm drop resistor. There's no need to do that since we're going to upgrade this C1 capacitor if it's not already been upgraded to a 25 volt because the 18 volts that are coming on this side where the step up circuitry is, there's no need to drop it down to 16 with that resistor. We just want the whole 18 volts to dump into this capacitor. Now these two components here, L2 and L3, you can get these off of Amazon pretty cheaply. It usually comes in an assortment set. You want to get 22 microhenries and you want to wire them in series like this. And keep this as short as possible, but also keep it exposed because we're going to need to connect C37 to it. What we're going to do is connect one leg of each inductor to each of these R1 pads. That way the current will flow through L3 and L2, which will then go to your C1 filter capacitor here. The midpoint between the two inductors is your C37, that is a 220 microfarad, 25 volt rated ceramic capacitor. It is a non-polar, meaning that there's no positive or negative. So there's no, there's no wrong way to put it in. You can put it in forwards or backwards. And what you can do is you can either connect it to this pad here or this pad here. We're gonna leave this zero ohm resistor, essentially a jumper in place, because we don't wanna mess, this is actually your ground side as it, go, it goes to the negative band of your filter capacitor. It's very tight to do that on this board. But if we do that correctly, that adds the missing components, which will then filter out that noise, fixing the issue of the earlier boards. Finally, the gain fader. So now this is VR12, which is the last fader here in the EQ as I pan across the camera here, sorry about the zoom. But number 12 is the gain fader. The volume fader is VR1, and that does not operate like the gain fader. As you can see, there is C28, which is 102 microfarad nonpolar capacitor. It's usually a ceramic. And we have R40, which is a 2 kilo ohm resistor that's connected between the output and the input, the inverting input there. And that will set the gain for the op amp for that gain fader. This is the way that it needs to be for the volume fader. If we look down here at the volume fader, you could see that it is lacking that 2 kilo ohm resistor and also that 102 microfarad capacitor. And this is where it gets very tricky on the board. Now here on the board, we are on the U1 chip. So it's U1B, which means it is the top two right pins that we're concerned about. You see where R6 is located, which is on the schematic between the inverting input and the output of that op amp, but you see a jumper right underneath it. That's essentially jumping those two pins together, which means that it is unity gain. That chip is not going to amplify on the volume fader. So that's the first thing that we would need to correct. You would need to take an X-Acto knife and carefully cut that trace underneath. From there, you would then have to take a two kilo ohm resistor and a 102 microfarad nonpolar capacitor, tie them together in parallel, and then each of those legs would then connect to those two pins. That will set the gain to the same way as the 
pre-gain fader of the EQ. And the only other thing that you would need to remove is over here. It's not on the schematic, but it is there, R59. That is a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor, and that is in series with the output of the post volume or the post gain stage there, the first fader on the EQ. You could just put a blob of solder to bypass it, or you can put a jumper wire. Doesn't really matter, but that resistor needs to come out of circuit. And then, only then, will the volume fader act like the pre-gain fader on the EQ. So if I haven't melted your brains and you've made it to this part of the video, I commend you and I thank you so much for sticking with me. As you can see, this type of modification is very delicate and in my mind very impractical given that the version 3.0 board for this EQ is going to be more widely available as time goes on. But if you have this board, this video should help you to modify it in order to stop that white noise from coming through on the audio lines. Well guys, that's it for me for this video. If there's any questions or comments, please feel free to leave a comment below. Thank you so much for supporting the channel as always. Have a good one. Cheers.